Well, summer solstice is tomorrow. It is the longest day and the shortest night of the year in the northern hemisphere, and it's considered the official start to the summer season. The sun that day crosses the sky in the highest arc of the year. So joining me now is Andrew Facknoy, astronomy professor at the Fromm Institute, the University of San Francisco. Andrew, thank you for being with us. I think some of us may need a little science refresher on how all of this works and really how the summer solstice impacts our seasons. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, this is uh, part of the rhythm of the seasons that we see on Earth. Uh, because the Earth is going around the sun leaning a little bit, it turns out that the amount of sunshine we get varies as the months go on. And when our northern hemisphere is leaning into the sun, as you see at the right of this diagram, then the sun spends more time with us and we have the long day, as you mentioned. The opposite on the other side of the earth, we're still leaning the same way. On the other side of the sun, I should say, we're still leaning the same way, but now we're leaning out of the sun. And that's when the northern hemisphere has winter. And it's the southern part of the earth that enjoys the long days and the nice sunshine. So this rhythm repeats as we circle the sun. So what are some of the misconceptions about why the earth is leaning? Well, so first of all, many people don't know that the seasons are caused by the leaning of the Earth. Many people even learn in school that it's the orbit of the Earth that causes the season, so that when the Earth is closer to the sun, it's summer, and when we're further away, it's winter, which makes sense. But it turns out we're closest to the sun. Uh, I'm sorry, we're furthest from the sun uh, in the summer and closest to the sun uh, in the winter which would make no sense at all. So it turns out to be the leaning that causes the seasons. And the reason that we're leaning goes back billions of years to the violent early days of our solar system, when there were many more bodies flying around than we have uh, settled down to respectable orbits today. And one of those bodies interacted with the Earth. And like many accident victims, we're now leaning over and we can't straighten out. So Earth was hit by something and that's why it's leaning? That's right, either hit by something or there was some kind of gravitational interaction that led to our planet uh, going around the sun, not with its head held up straight, but leaning over. It's kind of leaning, it's a little cockeyed there. Well, people that's have come up with some very interesting ways to mark the summer solstice. Some do yoga in Times Square, others gather at Stonehenge. So. What's the spiritual meaning behind all of that? Is there any science behind it as well? Well, the spiritual meaning is something we lend to events on Earth. They don't necessarily have to have a scientific background, but it's fascinating to know that the uh, Stonehenge monument with its stones thousands of years ago was built to align with where the sun was on the summer solstice. When you look at the stones, the stones are aligned in such a way that a very important stone is in front of the uh, summer solstice sunrise. And many people go there to still celebrate that ancient knowledge. It turns out ancient people were already well aware of the rhythm of the seasons. And this was their way of marking a calendar long before there were written records and, and uh, calendars on your iPhone. Fascinating stuff. We're all going to be looking tomorrow to the summer solstice. And now we know so much more about it. Professor Andrew Fracknoy, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Glad to be with you. <laughs> Glad to be with you, too.